Welcome back to the Power Public YouTube channel. In the next installment, we're talking the intermediate go-kart racer with Zach King. And we're gonna take him from being an absolute brand new guy, a beginner, a kook, a newbie, whatever you wanna call it. It's derogatory terms for new guys. And we're gonna take him from where he is now to racing super stardom. So come along for the ride. The tire stack there. Yeah. I mean, it was not good for you, but the, those tyres are insane. So, sticky air. Yeah. I guess one of the biggest takeaways for me was, with the new tyres, you can't brake in the same spot. You can't turn in at the same spot, because it just changes direction, it just stops in an instant. Yep. Instead of braking like a boss, like you do when you're brand new, just trying to learn the limit, brake at the same point, but just not as hard. Do not chirp in the tyres, creating excessive heat. Keep the cart nice and straight, and then instead of turning early and letting it understeer through the corner, just wait till the last second, turn the wheel. Bang. And it just goes, and that's how you get faster on a sticky track. The whole track's pretty sticky, no matter where you go. That new corner. <laughs> it's like two different surfaces. So yeah. that's, if the corner is stickier, like as the grip goes down at high level racing, you're gonna have to adjust your driving again. Feeling the grip, if it's grippy, drive fast. If it's slippery, like one brand new corner in a track, you've got, I don't know, is it 10 sticky corners and one slippery? I'm doing the same thing. I've just got to change my mind. Mm. Okay, nice and smooth. Don't let it slide. Get the cart to change direction and we'll get more speed just out of that one corner. Now, what happened with yours? I don't know. I think there might be some kind of oil on my brakes or something. Oh, there's some... I don't some know what's alarm. going on there, but... It looks like your disc is touching your caliper. Yeah. So we're going to double check your grub screws have come loose. See, look. So your axles move this way. And you can see here, oh, yeah, come loose. this is a telltale sign as well. Oh, when you're trying to diagnose problems uh, on yeah, your sprocket, sprocket. Yeah. you're shining up those teeth. Uh, that's a great one of, oh, what is it? Another telltale sign, if you come around here, you can see on your axle, clearly it's moved. Mm. Then on your brake disc, it's been going. Oh, they've even come loose on all yeah, of them. Look. Ah. Feel that? That's no good. But lucky for you, you know me, I got a truck, it's full of everything. Lock tight, spare grub screws, bang, we're back on. 10 PSI was great. The tires came up in no time. I don't know if you could see it when we play it back. And that's the biggest difference. If you stay on old tires for too long, I was saying it's JV when he got here. Get used to driving on old tires. Yeah. Yeah. You know that? Old tire technique, understeer, slide, your body adapts. Now we want to try and change our mind. Mm. New tire technique, just do that 50, 60 laps and give them to one of the new guys. Get yourself into that new tire again. That's how we level up. Level up, level up. Yep. Do you think because they had no grub screws, the axle was sliding around, that would cause the loss in power off the corner? Oh, too? yeah, because you're trying to accelerate, exaggerate it, like try and turn the wheel. Yeah, so all the power is getting chewed up by the brake disc rubbing because the side load puts the pad and the disc mm. harder, power gone. If you ever drop a second a lap at your local track, this is the first thing to check, axle moves. Brakes are rubbing, like the, the fluid's locking on. Those little things, like to drop a second a lap, it's gotta be something chronic, or the sprocket is absolutely hammered. That's a, I've seen that out here, nearly 1.7 seconds. Rear sprocket, front sprocket and chain all trashed, changed it. Really? Yeah. Any doubt lube, lube it every time. Both sides of the sprocket, heaps of lube because the chain chews up our power as well. And you know there's a saying is you can't buy experience. Well, that's not entirely true. You, you can hire people with more experience. You can. Yep. You can hire more people so with you can. experience. Yeah, an easy way if you want to check to see if your sprocket's out of alignment is look down through both the top and the bottom of the chain and spin the axle so you can see through it more clearly. And then you can literally see, oh yeah, I'm mega out because the chain will be rubbing on one side of the sprocket or same the other way. And because we already had it set up, we're just basically trying to put it back to its original position. Now, had you had this out to do an axle swap and just left them loose or you didn't use Loctite or? I didn't use Loctite. I and put them back in. Yeah, fair enough. Didn't use Loctite. Yeah, just some simple stuff like the old 234 or 243. Uh, is good enough for this job. If you use stud locker, it can be a real mission to get them out. So it's a bit of a, this is just a nice happy medium dab of the Loctite on your grub screw. Screw that into your bearing. All right, we're nearly back on track. So 
The only thing that saved us that time was excessive lubrication. When in doubt, lube. Lube it out. Okay, in the next session, we're gonna be going out with Zach. I'm gonna be behind him and filming for five laps and just trying to pay attention to some of the things that we could help him polish up. Then when we come in the back, in the pits, we're gonna break that down and run through some things that we could implement the next time we go out. And the same thing again, just record it, review it, record it, review it, and adjust as we, as we go along. Well, that was, that was a pretty good session. The one thing I could say that is pretty consistent that would help you improve, or the biggest gains I see, it's the critical corner here, turn two. When you come in there, I don't know if you're turning too late or you're not braking at all, but you miss the apex by a meter. And what that does is that you, you run out of track coming out of the corner, so you have to be weight. Slow on the gas. What comes after that corner? Well, there's a series of corners, but you're nearly full, full noise, you're yeah. right? So. I noticed I had a lot more understeer than usual. Okay. And not many brakes. Like the brake, like it was better than that first run, but the brake pressure yeah, right. is not how it's normally. Like I was struggling to lock the wheel. Oh, right. Yeah. Maybe like you got I'm... some air in there or something. Let's whip the pads out. That's easy, let's have a look. They might have been glazed up. We'll rub the disc with some brake cleaner. Yeah, Scuff okay. the pads over there on the on the bitumen just to uh, expose some new material and we'll go again. It has have been. you got any questions? It was the brakes and even understeer more than usual. I like it really pointy in the front end. I haven't touched any of the front end. It looks like you got crazy amounts of pause. Yeah, I like a lot of pause. But it's only like two mil pause, it's not. The beauty of working on hot go-karts is you get nice and burnt. Oh, so they can glaze up, you get a bit of oil in them or whatever. So if you just take the pads out of, your, out of the um, car, a bit of concrete or bitumen even, if you really want something coarse, and you just scratch it off and you can see that the, the copper's starting to come through and that is um, the fresh material. Mm. So if there's any oil or anything in there, I don't know, maybe you WD'd your axle or something, and you've got some WD-40, these are porous and they start to soak the oil into mm. them a bit. Potentially. Forward, backward, left and right. You've just got to get the car back out on track for that next session. So do whatever you can MacGyver style. If you've got new pads, chuck them in. But if you don't have the budget, this is an easy way just to fix it up and get yourself back out on the track, ready to bite into the disc. And we'll go and rub the disc with um, some brake cleaner and a fresh rag. Yeah, okay. Come on, we'll focus. I just don't think you need that much pause. Like you're getting mega jack. Yeah, right. If you only want to unload the rear, and that way you're keeping. Just the initial front turning's not there. Normally for initial you would do that, but I mean you got new bags. So let's move the front wheels out, they give you more leverage. Let's get rid of the positive camber back to neutral because you shouldn't need it with a brand new tire, especially here because it's so sticky. You won't have much at the start, but then once you get into the corner, because you, your cart's lifting this much off the ground. You, I don't know if you can feel it. I can definitely see it when I walked around. Now what that does is it, it's overloading the outside tire by lifting that one so much, you, you, you just start to lose some of the contact patch because you, you're just jacking so much. Isn't that good? No, a little bit of jack's good. You've yeah. just got to get the tire, ideally, off the ground this much so mm -hmm. there's no bind. Okay. It doesn't, if it goes this much, too much. Too much. 
but it's good to try, like this is what you'd normally do. We're going back to neutral, a little bit of negative camber. If you're doing data in your micron, the easiest way to look at this little bar graph should come down and then just stay down like this. Yep. If it comes down and then starts going up again over 10 laps, okay, your tire pressure's probably a bit too high. And this one here, so maybe fractionally we're half a pound too low on the tire pressures because his best lap's right here at the end, just as a rule of thumb. So sticky. I really got to concentrate, flex well, my you're legs, turning in too early. put everything, and just use my body to let it turn. If I use my arms, like being lazy, just wait. It just throws me around. But if I just use my body and press, and you know, really use that shoulder to th throw a bit of weight forward, a lot smoother. Way smoother, especially down at six. You can come in hot, just turn and hold and wait, and it goes and just hooks around. And then you've got a good, nice set on the front for seven. What I really found in that session then, you know, it's quite hot. The track's in really good condition. We've got new tires on today. So we want to do that new tire technique where we're not using the forearms as much to steer the go-kart. We're starting to use our body more. The beauty of that is once you turn the cart in, if it doesn't turn enough, you can just put a little bit more shoulder into it and that'll help the cart get through the corner and keep the cart flexed. Whereas if you're just using your forearms, uh, I found anyway through the faster corners, the cart starts to move and then it starts to buck your body around because you're not all locked into the seat. So that posture, racing position where you lock your heels into the heel rest, really flare your shoulders back and your lats into the seat, and hold on and really grip with your, your core. And then you can really sort of muscle that cart through the corners. And with the new tires and feeling how grippy the circuit is, it, I find that really helpful here tonight at uh, Ipswich Car Club. One of the takeaways for me was driving tonight, you had to use your body. If you just used your arms to throw it into a corner, the track was too grippy. It wanted to throw you around, especially with the low tire pressures. What do you reckon the best tip would be to throw your body around? Because I feel like I wasn't consciously thinking about it. Like What I find is I've got to get hyper progressive. I've got to go for that super fast lap time. So sort of lock my rib cage down to some degree without crushing all my ribs. You're kind of just shortening the distance between your hips and your bottom ribs mm -hmm. so that it's all nice, like a really firm base. Push your heels on your heel stop, keeps your hips back and then you crunch forward and then your, your upper body can sit and take the G's of the corner. Mm -hmm. So when you put it into the corner, you, you know, you're not doing these ones if the card is. You can sort of absorb that through, through your body. I think that's something that you, you'd want to work on, especially coming into the next race day here.